In our own strength, in our own ability, in our own faith, in our own mindset, are we able to lead the way that they should be? See, it was the folk that the folk was leading. The treasure by God judges the heart of man. See, so if he judges our hearts, we're going to be judged because of what's in our heart. And then all kinds of stuff go through your mind. The devil takes it easy so you know anything go through your mind. Give me this room and I'll be discerned between the good and bad. A good prayer and a bad prayer. A good decision and a bad decision. Give me discernment so I can know who's with me and who's not with me. You got to know folks for you or they're against you. You know folks that tell you anything and they'll smile on your face while they stab you in your back. Praise the Lord, beloved. We thank you again for your joining with God's prophetic word. I am Apostle Anatha, and we have a word from the Lord to continue what we've been sharing concerning increasing and intensifying our warfare, advancing the kingdom, and being stretched of God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We ask that you would speak to us, speak through us, give us revelation of what you're saying Open eyes of our understanding to receive it and perceive it. Thank you, Father God, for breaking every yoke and destroying the yoke of bondage in our lives so that we will be pliable to your word and that we bring forth fruit and that fruit remain all for your glory. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. And the church said, amen. Amen. So we're continuing this word of ways of intensifying our warfare. As leaders, we have to intensify the warfare. So we spoke about spending more time with Father. We spoke about disciplining ourselves. He that can rule his own spirit is greater than the mighty. He that, control, he that can control his anger is greater than the mighty. This is Proverbs 16 and 22, 32. And he that can rule his own spirit is greater than he that can take a city. And then we talked about praying without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 16 and 17. Meeting more physically, coming together the more. The Bible says in Hebrew 10 and 25, as we see the days approaching, come together the more, not the less. Not, uh, well, I'm watching on YouTube. Well, uh, I'm doing the Zoom. Well, I'm on the conference call. All those are good, but that's the norm. The foolish versions did the norm. The wise versions did the extra. I'm going to service. I know it's snowing. I know it's raining. I know it's a blizzard. I know they told you to stay in the house. I know they said there's a COVID out there and we can't be, we got a social distance. I'm going to the house of God. So I can do the more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> then we talked about all night prayer. In and, and, and Acts chapter 12 and verse uh, 5, King Herod had grabbed Peter, put him in jail, but the saints prayed all night. They prayed without ceasing. We have them all night prayer meetings. That's what's going on in revivals at Asbury and Lee College and Uganda and other places. They're praying, singing, worshiping all day and all night, nonstop. Mm -hmm. We got to get to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how the revivals flow. Then the miracles come, repentance, deliverance out of those meetings. Then we got to have fasting. He told him in Matthew 17, 21, he said, the doubt and fear that you got, you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and it'll happen if you walk in in faith. But that kind of doubt come out by prayer and fasting. So we got to ask from fasting. Now, fasting is not just food, because you may not never eat much. <laughs> well, I only eat once a day, and that's a little slight meal, so... Fasting for me really ain't fasting. So you may have to fast your phone. <laughs> you may have to fast your favorite TV shows or your uh, uh, meeting with your family. Well, I'm consecrating now and I ain't meeting with y'all right now because I'm fasting, I'm consecrating, setting myself aside. So fasting not just food, but fast what's, what's most uh, hard for you to do or, or to do without. That's, that's the real fast. What's hardest for you to do without? Because if you have eat, there ain't going to be no real fast. There ain't really no sacrifice. But if you just can't go without being on YouTube or TikTok or Facebook or uh, on your phone, 
then that's a fast for you to not do that. And then you got more worship. Revelations 4 and 8. They said, holy, holy, holy to the Lord of hosts. Day and night. There is no night in heaven, so continuous. Okay. Uh, endeavoring, Ephesians 4 and 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We got to do whatever it takes to keep networking, keep working together, keep the love of God growing and coming forth. The Bible don't say they should know you are my disciples because of the miracles, powers of, of deliverance and healing and casting out devils and speaking in tongues and prophesying. It don't say they should know that you are my disciples for those things. It says when you believe these things should happen. But how are they going to know we are his disciples? Because of our love one for another. The book of John tells you that. It said, by your love, they should know ye are my disciples. I told them that in, in, in Matthews also. So, our love for one another. And then, we have to also testify, make known his deeds among the people. Revelation 12 and 11, I overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. You got to tell what the goodness of the Lord is doing. Yeah, uh-huh. So here, as we are advancing the kingdom, ways of intensifying our warfare, we got to look at some of the things that are happening in the world. Because mm -hmm. he said in Matthew 24, chapter, he said, when you see these abominations of desolations spoken by Daniel the prophet, flee into the mountain. Abominations. That's this. Uh, the president get on and say, we want to shout for joy because we have a transgender uh, uh, we, we're acknowledging transgenderism. Abomination. That's disgusting. For our president, Joe Biden, to get on the television and tell the people that we're celebrating a man want to be a woman or a woman want to be a man. Now, you know, good and well, you wasn't born like that. And I don't care what kind of feeling you got. I, sometimes I feel like slapping somebody, but I can't go and slap them. Huh? <laughs> there, was a, there, was, there was a situation on news I saw today. Young teen, in, uh, I think it was in Florida, got mad at the teacher because the teacher took his Nintendo uh, dipstick, took it from him. He ran after her, pushed her down on the floor. She must have hit her head because she went conscious right away. And he started beating this teacher, big old boy, beating her over a Nintendo stick. Come on, y'all. Come on. This world is going crazy. I'm telling you. So if we don't increase and intensify our warfare, the devil is running havoc in people's lives. Yeah. He even got our president going to other nations and telling other presidents in Uganda and, and, and Nigeria and these other... President, he's telling them, well, if y'all don't accept our homosexual and LGBT uh, uh, agenda, then we ain't going to give y'all the money, we promise you. And they said, well, keep your money, because we ain't like that over here, and we ain't letting that spirit come over here. See, the spirit is an abomination. And if the United States don't repent of that, the judgment hand of God going to come, because he ain't going to let Sodom and Gomorrah be judged and, and, and us run around here acting like, we invincible as a nation. Yeah. You know that balloon that came in to spy out the United States? They weren't playing. They strategizing. China is strategizing against the, to attack the United States. And that may be the judgment hand of God on this nation if we don't repent as a nation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see this California is flooded, uh, bombarded with snow, snowstorm in California? That ain't heard of in my lifetime. I ain't never heard of that. They said 35 years ago, but I don't remember. Yeah. Snow in California. Snowstorm. You had two trains run into each other. Psh. I mean, all kinds of major catastrophes. You had 39, 39 mass shootings in January alone. 39 mass shootings. Six-year-old shoots his teacher. He must get really mad at her. Six-year-old shoots his teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're looking at abominations 
and desolations, disgusting and devastating. Desolations are devastating things. These things are devastating, and it's disgusting how you going to say they, they, they signed a bill here. Our governor in Waltz in, in Minnesota signed a bill that says that there is no restrictions on abortion. Now, the Bible says that God hates those that spread innocent blood. In other words, killing babies. And God even killed a man for just allowing his, 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 his sperm to fall to the ground instead of going into his brother's wife so she could have a baby to keep their bloodline going. Instead of him getting her pregnant, he lets it go to the ground. And God killed him for doing that. Yeah. So if God is that concerned about our, our sperm uh, 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 just going to the ground instead of impregnating the family so that they can keep the family bloodline going, how much more is he concerned about a baby that has started developing in the womb? Now, I heard this situation, this, this statement on, on TikTok. A lady said, well, how about this? If the woman, if the woman or the wife got the right to choose what to do with her body, then how come the man ain't got the right to choose what to do with his body? Yeah, yeah. If you, as a woman, if you want to kill the baby, that's your right. Then what about the man's body? What if he want to keep his child support to himself? Yeah, that, that wallet is in his pocket, which is on his body, which belongs to him. And if you get to kill your baby, I get to keep my child support in my pocket. That should be my right if you got the right to choose to kill my baby. The quiet is kept, the baby ain't yours. You the incubator. You the carrier of the seed. The seed comes from the man. Yeah, without the man, you can't have a seed. Women can't bring forth babies together. You need a male seed. And a man can't carry a baby. You need a female. So that's why he made male and female, not male and male, not female and female. Yes, there, there, there are things that you can enjoy in the flesh, but that flesh going to get you in a mess. Yeah, it is. That's why we got to crucify our flesh. So these are, these are disgusting abominations and desolations, devastating things happening in our world today. You got Ukraine and, and Russia still at war a year later. Thousands of people alive been killed. Women and children. But they fight on. But the United States is study sending the money. Now all that money you sent, you could have been helping uh, a, a lot of black folks out of debt, buy homes, yeah, open businesses. You know, there were 64 blank banks that was owned by blacks. Now it's only 17. What happened? We got tired. We got upset. Or was there a strategy to get blacks out of the banking business? Mm -hmm. Because if you're black and you own a bank, you can give loans to blacks that can buy houses and be stable. Yeah. Open businesses and have their own income coming in and not working for a system that study pulling and snatching and strategizing and manipulating us out of what this nation said justice for all mm -hmm. yeah so we're looking at this from a standpoint of leadership in the church we are the ecclesia the governing authority of this world and if we, the ecclesia, don't do our part, the devil can have a field day, like he's doing. He's running amok. Mm -hmm. He's causing havoc in society. And where are we? Where are we apostles? Where are we prophets? Where are we evangelists? Where are we pastors? Where are we teachers? Where are we five-fold ministry leaders that have the authority? Whatever you bind on earth, he said to the church, he said to Peter, you want to read that? Let's go to that. Matthew 16, Matthew 18, and I say unto you, 
Also, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I build, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Look like the gates of hell run the muck to me. Yeah, when they telling a teacher that you are fired for telling the parents of a child that their child want to have a sex operation and the school system tells in California, tells the teacher, if they tell that parent that that child want to change their sex and have an operation, you, the teacher, cannot tell the parent. What kind of mess is that? Anywhere else you go with a, a child having any kind of operation, they got to have parent permission, consent. But they ain't got to have parent consent to change their sex. Today they want to be a girl, they're a boy, tomorrow they want to be back a boy. Well, they cut the thing off, and now they can't be a boy no more. Huh? Well, I changed my mind. But, 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 but can we have another operation here? Fix this thing, pre fix this thing, doctor. Well, why didn't you tell your parents? They could have talked you out of it. They could have told you they, you couldn't do it. This is a, the abominations and desolations that's going on in our world today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There was a teacher that was fired. Teacher was fired because he didn't address this transgender in the right way. The boy wanted to be a girl, so he goes in the girl's locker room. He tell him, boy, you are a boy, and you are a male, and you got to come up out of there. The girls leave the locker room because they know he's a he and he's not a she. I don't care what he say. They fired the teacher. Fired the teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you won't go around and say, we in the land of the free. We gonna sanction you, uh, other other nations, if you don't do right, if you don't treat your people right. Here we're selling contraceptives, not from the doctor's office, but from Walgreens and pharmacies, killing the baby in the womb, keeping you from having a baby with a pill so that you can have all the sex you want and nothing wrong with it. The Bible says fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. You have sex outside of marriage, God says he gonna judge you. But here as a nation, we're pushing this, pushing it. Yeah, we are. And then we're going around and telling other nations, yeah, yeah, this is what we doing. And we sanctioning your nation and ain't gonna give you the money if you don't do it. You got Planned Parenthood running around here in the world, now not just in the United States, in the world promoting the sexual class, uh, sex educational class. They're teaching eight and nine-year-olds how to have anal sex at eight and nine years old. What you doing even talking about sex at eight and nine years old? That that's for grown folks. That ain't for teenagers. Sure, that ain't for children in fourth and fifth grade. Eight and nine, third grade. And you teaching them how to have anal sex? Huh? In the school? And you talking about you playing parenthood? I don't know what kind of hood you planning for, but that ain't the parent that we're parenting. This is the spirit of the devil. These are the things that's coming against us in leadership because you know what they're telling leadership? Well, now, if you're a pastor and you want to preach against homosexuality, you want to preach against transgender, you want to preach against uh, unrighteousness, then we may have to take away your 501c3. When choirs are kept, churches are automatically tax them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So five major strongholds we got to tend to as leadership in the church. 
us as apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, we got these five major strongholds. Now, not, not, not just withstanding what I just shared about all these devastating and abominations and desolations. These are the strongholds that's coming against us leadership. Number one is pride. Acts chapter 8, verse 20. Let's go to Acts 8 and 20. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Money brings power, authority. Mm -hmm. When we go back to Matthew chapter uh, 16, verse 18, he said, upon this rock I will build my church. Now, the rock was not a physical rock. It was the acronym of rock, R-O-C-K. It was a revelation of Christ's kingdom. Peter got a revelation of who Jesus was. So the rock was R-O-C-K, revelation of Christ's kingdom. The kingdom is the church. The church, the, the acronym for church is Christ's hierarchy United, righteously, conquering heavens. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in the heavens. We take authority on earth, he takes and backs it up in the heavens. The demons operate in the second and the first and the, the second heavens. So if we bind them on earth, the angels are binding them in the heavens. We take authority. We counsel that. I decree and declare, I bind this spirit of perversion and whoredom and this sexual spirit that's running rampant, this spirit of pride. I got, to use, I got to use my authority. If I can use my authority, I can use my money, I can use my position, and I can tell folks what they can and cannot do. This spirit of pride is running rampant in the church. Matthew 10 and 8. Let's go there. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely you give. This goes to our next stronghold of greed. You got preachers charging 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 45, 50 thousand dollars for you to come preach in that church. That's greed. Freely you have received, freely you give. Stop charging them people all that money. Greed, pride, power, greed, money. Third stronghold spirit we warn against is lust. Lust is getting at the expense of others. It's the opposite of love. Love is giving at the expense of self. Lust is getting at the expense of others. So when you're lusting, if you want to get something for your own pleasure, that folks' money, that folks following you, that folks giving to your, your ministry, that folks magnifying your name, uh huh, all that is a part of lust. And then when you get into sexual perversion, oh, that's another whole realm of sin that the enemy uses, sexual perversion. It's, it's more folks, and this is quite as kept. Uh, pastors, prophets, apostles, evangelists, teachers that are on the YouTube, on the internet with pornography than you could ever imagine because we're being bombarded with sexual lust. Hey, we ain't excluded. I don't care what anointing you got. I don't care what position. You are not excluded from this attack of the devil of the spirit of sexual Perversion of lust against leadership. Matthew 5 and 27 tells us that now it, it, it's a sin not to just see a woman, but to look on her and lust in our heart. I ain't got to have sex with you to be in lust. I can want to. And in my mind, see me doing it, and that's lust. And that's sin. And that's fornication, that's adultery. Even though I never touch you. So this is a spirit that's Targeting leadership, especially, and especially us, those who are, are married. Oh, it's really come against us. Why? Because the devil knows that this is one of his greatest strategies, lust. Mm -hmm. So pride, power, greed, money, sexual lust, perversion. Then you got self-righteousness, division. Matthew 12 and 25. 
Matthew 12 and 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself cannot stand. Self-righteousness breeds division. I'm better than you. Our church is better than yours. Our organization is better than y'all's. So we ain't got a fellowship with you. The Bible said endeavor to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. We got to endeavor to keep, find out how we can stay together. Not, I'm better than y'all. Self-righteousness breeds division. A city divided against itself cannot stand. And then the last one is idol worship. Acts 3 and 12. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? Don't we make no idols out of us? No. Don't we worshiping us? Leaders, you got to stop letting folks worship you because you letting them make an idol out of you. God's going to get them and you. Vain glory. That's how Moses missed out on the promised land. He wanted to steal Father's glory. Must we fetch you red with water out of the rock? He wasn't getting that water out of that rock. God was getting that water out of that rock. Moses wanted to do what to get the dirt off the rock. So, pride, power, Greed, money, lust, sexual perversion, self-righteousness, division, vainglory, idol worship. Father, we come against these strongholds, five major strongholds coming against church leadership right now. We bind you, spirit of pride, through power, greed, through money, lust, through sexual perversion, division, through self-righteousness, and idol worship, through vainglory. We bind you, spirits of pride, greed, lust, division, and idol worship, and we cancel your assignment against the leadership of the church of the body of Christ. We uproot, eradicate, and destroy your works from the root. In Jesus' name, we pull it up from the root, and we destroy it at the root. In Jesus' name, Father, we decree and declare a spirit of humility, a spirit of giving, a spirit of love instead of lust, a spirit of unity instead of division, a spirit of giving you the glory instead of idol worship and vainglory. We call upon you and give you all the praise. We magnify you because you that working in us, you do the will and we do the work. It's your will, but it's your glory. It's your way and not our way. Father, we surrender to your glory and we pray for everyone that's been attacked, every leader that's been attacked, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. And the church said, amen.